Hello everybody, attorney Shauna Carpellis here with CA Bar Style. I hope you're all doing well. The topic of today's video is one of the most frequently asked questions that I get at the inception of a consult call with me. And that is, what is the CA Bar Style program all about? Now I've made other content similar to this topic before on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook, but I wanted to freshen up this topic because I've been doing this a long time now, and of course the program has evolved. And nowadays the program is more of a holistic bar prep. And that means I'm looking at the totality of an applicant's journey. Now I always have in some regard looked at and taken very seriously at a student or applicant's storyline, you know, where they come from, what their fears are, um, if they've taken the test before, what they've done to prepare but it's even more elevated nowadays. And so I wanna get into the extraneous factors that we look at as well. Extraneous factors are in addition to the baseline foundational program and the steps of that that I'll talk about in a moment. But at CA Bar Style, I'm going to care about your journey and I'm going to care about however much you wanna share with me, not everybody does, but however much you want to share with me in terms of, like I said, your state of mind, your history with the test, maybe you're a first time taker and you have fears about the unknown, there are going to be um, caring conversations and coaching that we have to make sure that you are in a good place with the totality of your prep and that it really is full circle by the time you reach the bar you are taking. So let's get into the steps. I'll get into a little bit more about the extraneous factors at the end, but I appreciate you watching. I will try to make this short and sweet. I know when I watch social media videos and they're too long, I kind of tend to tune out. So um, the purpose of this video really was before you have that consultation with me and I offer a complimentary consult, which you should book, that really should be your first step, where if you're kind of unsure when you should take the test again, um, if, if you are a repeater, or when you should take the test as a first time, maybe for an attorney or attorney applicant or first time taker right out of the California law school, um, and, you, and you're kind of looking around going, what's the best move for me? What's the best prep? This is a good preliminary start so you can get some foundational understanding as to what I do here. And then I also recommend looking at other videos that I've made on YouTube and definitely going to the website at cabarstyle.com so you can read pages such as how we help with essays, how we help with PTs, and how we help with the MBE portion to get a really thorough overview. After you watch this video, of course, in the consult call, any other, or, or Zoom, sometimes we do Zooms, you can request that. Um, any other questions you have, I'll be happy to answer as well. So let's get started. Once the consult happens, if you decide that you want to move forward with the CA Bar Style program and have me be your guide, and I'd be delighted and humbled to be, then, of course, you enroll in the program. That takes about a week or so and we get you all started. So I am going to focus this um, lecture, I don't say lecture, but this video on the two month courses that happen before the July and February bars. But of course we also have early prep as an addition that you can add on. But let's say you're enrolling in the general course. So for instance, we have the July 23 course starting in a couple weeks, about May 22nd and you are enrolling, you're, you get your materials shipped, so we still have materials that ship out. We have amazing outlines, um, black letter law outlines, as well as over 50 essay approaches that I'm very well known for, and our performance test approach, all of the essays you'll be practicing on, and people ask, are those real California essays? Yes, of course, you should only practice on real California previously tested bar essays. Our own CA bar style model answers, um, performance test answers as well, and of course, uh, attack memorization outlines, memorization flashcards. My point is I don't want you really going to any other materials. So you get those shipped, they come in a nice box. We also have full digital materials online you get access to as well. 
So that is the enrollment uh, process. You get into Sky Prep, which is our online classroom. It's similar to like, um, I think it's called Blackboard. I had that at USC. Um, and it's a very organized system. I'm really meticulous and I want it to be very clear. I don't want any part of this process to be overwhelming for you. So you're all set up in the program and then you get your course daily schedule. Now the schedule is made pursuant to the package that you enroll in and every different package has a different number of essays that you have graded. In those consult calls, I'm recommending a package for you. So if you're like, what do I need? Don't necessarily think necessarily think you need the top line package, which, which is the elite. You may not need that much service. That is a lot of service. Some applicants need it, not all. So book that consult so I can guide you, okay? Now, in the daily schedule, there is embedded a six prong step or six steps to the scheduling. So let's go through them all. The first step in the scheduling, and this is a weekly basis, seven days of a course schedule. I do give off some days like for the February bar for holidays, for the July bar. There aren't as many holidays, but like July 4th will be off. Memorial Day will be off. Other than that, we are studying. Um, how many hours a day? It really does vary. We start the class with an intro and legal analysis writing workshop. In that intro, I'm telling you exactly how to carry out your schedules and I'm giving you the time frame on how to kind of you know gauge how much to, time to be spending on each one of the assignments. But for a general overview, the first step is the law. Now, nothing that we do at CA Bar Style is cookie cutter. I'm not, you know, here to knock other courses, but a lot of prep out there is very cookie cutter. It hasn't changed in 30 plus years. For the purposes of the CA Bar Style program, I want you to be highly focused on categorical areas of law, but I don't want you sitting and getting stuck with law. If you are a repeat applicant, you probably have already experienced getting caught up in how long should I be reviewing this area of law or maybe too many materials or your outlines were too long and you were just getting lost in enigma of materials. So we really want to prevent that. And in that intro class, I'm telling you exactly how to maneuver through the causes of action and defenses or the crimes or procedures so that you can connect with the elemental requirements and you are able to understand the body of law, maybe some early memorization right away as well, but that you're getting out of it a little bit quicker and you're getting into the next step, which is approach. Most applicants, especially repeat applicants or applicants that have been studying independently for some months, by the time they find me, they have no idea what I'm talking about when I say approach. Approach is fundamental. I'm a litigator and I know a lot of law and I also teach about 15 subjects of law. So I'm, I'm very exposed to law, but approach is how the law is tested. And in a, in a litigation world, the essays are very congruent with that. So it is really important that you have approach for every area that is tested. So let's say in your schedule on a Monday, you're reviewing homicide and I'm having you go through the requisite elements of every charge of homicide and their corresponding potential defenses. Then I'm gonna have you go into how homicide is tested. So whether that's for the multiple choice or whether that's for the essays, I mean, homicide gets tested in four, five, six different essay fact patterns. So if you're just going from law right to writing a homicide essay, but you have no approach and strategy, then you're going to lose likely a lot of issues, which is going to cost you points. So it's really important to have that strategy. You'll be learning approach through lectures that are pre-recorded within your classroom portal. You'll be watching them. They're not very long. I try and make them entertaining and you'll be following along with written approach um, documents. So that is how you learn approach. And then there's a way that I'm having you reconnect with the approach after that after you watch it. So you've got to get the law step one in a very focused way down, but get out of it a little quicker, refresh yourself on it, make sure you understand it. You don't need to be perfect with it, but you have to have a good foundation there. And then you get into the approach. 
And the same goes for the multiple choice. You learn the law and then you learn the approach and you start understanding how homicide and all the nuances there are tested. The same goes for the performance test. We have a great performance test workshop that I teach. It's a 90 minute performance test, as you probably know. So it's a 90 minute approach. It walks you through how to really tackle every different type of PT. So if you're just writing performance tests, or if you're just writing essays, or if you're just taking multiple choice and there's no strategy involved to start, you're gonna feel really lost and uneasy. And that's where that overwhelmed feeling typically tends to kick in. So very, very focused on step two, which is approach and strategy. And I'm giving a very broad overview of that, but it's it's pretty loaded. There's a lot there. So in terms of um, the significance of it, it's pretty high step two approach. One law, two law elevated in the gamut of approach. That's where you'll have your clarity and go, wow, I never would have known to give that issue. I never would have known that that could cross over. I never would have known that that issue requires a lengthier analysis. So we really have to get to know the law. And I'm not going to be (laughs) like a record player repeating myself, but it's really important. Step three is practice. So most courses go law, a lot of law, right to practice, minimal practice. We do a lot of practice in my course. For issue spotting, at least 10 to 15 per subject, you have to be exposed to all the different ways that categorical areas are tested, whether it's big ticket items like negligence or miscellaneous topics like malicious prosecution and abusive process. You have to know how to hit all of your or most of your issues. There's a very little wiggle room to miss key issues or um, key holdings on the performance test. The performance test is very important. It's worth two essays. I'm a stickler for it. A lot of courses kind of jump over it or just have you do some practice or maybe they have a minimal approach but it's not very thorough and then of course they're not working with you to make sure you're getting it. So a lot of practice, at least one PT per week, potentially more if it's not your sweet spot. potentially more issue spotting, potentially more writing. So the writing is crucial. Issue spotting and writing go hand in hand for the essay portion. Um, But the package that you're in will assign, will have how much writing that you have enrolled in. Typically that's based on my recommendation, how much you're going to need. Now writing is important to set up the answer, to elevate the issue spotting, and of course, to test yourself on timing and let me see and you see how you deal with analysis, legal analysis. So writing in 60 minutes is crucial for um, your performance on the real exam and closed book writing is factored into the preparation as well. We don't do it right away, um, but if I feel like you're ready, everyone, every applicant is ready at a different time, I will let you know when I want you to close the book and start challenging yourself, close book, so that you go into the test really well prepared, having that experience in your preparation. So after you do your practice, and that's the flow of the subject, right? So law, categorical law, maybe we're spending three, four days. Usually it's about four or five days on the MBE big subject, sometimes even a little more on the non-MBE, about three to four days. And after you get through, you submit your essays, you're, you're doing your multiple choice, which I'll talk about in a moment, and then you go into um, the next subject. And after about two weeks into the course, this is step four, So law, approach, practice, assessment. This is the most crucial step, in my opinion, because up until this point, you're learning a new system. You're going through the motions of your bar prep. You think you're on the right track. You're definitely getting a lot more clarity than you would have in another course or that um, you had in a previous experience of prep. But at this point, you're still probably a little unsure as to where you stand. And that's where I come in. And I don't delegate any of the tutoring, although people ask me all the time to to work for CA Bar Style, which is awesome, uh, maybe as a grader, but 
As a tutor, nope, I don't delegate that. There's nobody that can do what I do. I can see a lot and I spend about an hour before the actual tutoring session going through, and I call it assessment, but it's the tutoring session. But of course, I think of it more of an assessment as to the totality of your file. So I'm going into your essays. I'm going into your performance tests. I'm getting your score report from Adaptabar, which I'll talk about in a moment, the MBE portion. And I'm seeing what are your patterns? Where are you losing points overall? You get a lot of great feedback from the graders on a particular essay or performance test. And my graders are phenomenal. Some of them have been with me for over seven, eight years. I've been doing this again um, about 13 years. And they're real California licensed attorneys. Um, they know the bar in and out. They've been trained on my style uh, thoroughly. But it can't stop there. You have to really have in my opinion, that elevated feedback to tell you where you stand. How How is your analysis looking? What's your structure like? What nuances on the MBE are you consistently getting wrong? Whatever it is that wherever it is you're losing points has to gain clarity and then you have to have and be given tools to improve on that. It's the only way that this is going to progress and it's going to connect. So it's crucial that you do those assessments and you book them um, depending on the packaging that you're in. Usually applicants only need about two assessments. Um, we don't typically book three or four. Some applicants like let's say in the elite package will book their third or fourth. Usually by then it's a little uh, hand holding or pep talk that is being given. But after the first assessment, you have so much clarity and I'm giving you the tools to improve. And if you put them into play, because of course, you got to be committed to doing the work, which most of my applicants are very passionate and very hardworking applicants. And then you go and put that into play by the second assessment. You're maybe not ready to take the bar, but we're just really solidifying things. So about two assessments is definitely enough. Um, and then if you need a third or fourth, then you could add it a la carte, but usually it does not get to that. So assessment as the fourth step. Now the fifth step in the process is re-review. So the way that I make the scheduling is we go through all of the big MBE topics within about a month, about four or five weeks. And then as we're starting the non-MBE topics, this is really unique. I think I'm the only one that does scheduling like this. We do a re-review of the MBE topics again with more issue spotting and more writing and more what I call MBE tracking. So the re-review process, especially for these very big MBE topics, is crucial because most course schedules just go through the MBE subjects and then go right into non-MBE and then go right into memorization. And the problem with that is that these MBE subjects are tested on not only the essays, not only the multiple choice, but your, your general knowledge of them are pertinent to the performance test, and they usually are a topic for the PT. So you really have to have the most foundation on the MBE topics, as well as professional responsibility, because we know it comes up every essay portion of the California bar exams. But aside from that, the MBE subjects are the biggest to know. So you've got to do a re-review, step five, very important, while you're doing the non-MBE, it seem, it may seem like a lot, but the way that I, excuse me, structure the schedule, it is manageable. And um, your study your study time kind of bumps up about two and a half to three hours a day during the re-review time frame, and it goes about 13 days. But it is manageable, and it is something that you will feel so glad that you did because you're not going to you know, go into memorization and not have seen a lot of those subjects for over a month. You'll have just re-reviewed a lot of those topics again. Now, the sixth step is solidification. So a lot of courses refer to this as the memorization phase. 
I refer to it as solidification. This is where we do the simulated exam. The purpose of that exam is to solidify your timing on essays and MBEs and the performance test. It is a stamina building, um, two rigorous days, full days of proctoring, and we follow the timeline of the actual California bar exam days. By then, the schedules are released um, for those days, so we're following their time frame, and they're really crucial solidification days for stamina and timing building. And of course, then we go into memorization, which is also in that step six of solidification because you're solidifying all this great preparation that you've done. And that's really where the epiphanies happen. Through this process, um, there'll be days where you feel great. There'll be days where you'll go, do I have enough time? Do I, you know, am I gonna get this done? And if I'm telling you you're on the right track, which most of the time you will be if you're doing the work, then by that solidification period, about two weeks before the test, you're going to be rocking and rolling and really feeling like, oh, I still have to memorize, which is a lot and can be a lot of very pressure filled days. But you're going to have a lot of great preparation behind you to be able to go in and attack the test. So that is those are the six steps. Um, focus law approach of all three areas, heavy practice, but methodical and not overwhelming, but it, you have to practice, okay? Assessment, review, and solidification as your sixth. And then there's extraneous factors. How are the extraneous factors dealt with? Well, in addition to assessment, tutoring, every package also has coaching. Coaching is, let's say, um, we're doing, a, we have a week going on, and by the way, in the course, we also have weekly Zooms, so if you're preparing for July 23, I don't know when you're watching this, you go to cabarstyle.com and you can see all the Zoom schedules, uh, the Zoom dates, excuse me, on there, and in those Zooms, I'm going through each subject individually, we're, we're dissecting it, I'm telling you what's what comes up there, what's due to come up, the topics you need to know, we're going through issue spotting exercises, MBE exercises. There's a lot that goes on in this course. Again, no stone unturned here. Got to cover all bases. Not again in an overwhelming way. I don't want you feeling like you can't breathe. I want you feeling like you're getting it. It's moving. It's progressing. But bar prep always has an edge to it. You're always going to feel somewhat stressed out. But in conjunction to your weeks, you can schedule coaching. Some applicants need to speak to me you know, at once every couple weeks uh, on a coaching call. Other applicants may need weekly. It just depends on your individual needs. Coaching is re in relation to those extraneous factors I was talking about in the beginning. So um, your state of mind, maybe you need a pep talk. Maybe you're a parent applicant and you're having a hard time with your time management. Or you're a working applicant and you're also having a hard time with your time management. Whatever your individual needs are, your fears, and of course those get hit in the assessments as well and the tutoring, but they also can pop up when we're not doing an assessment. So it's really important that the coaching is available to make sure that you feel like I'm there, I'm present, especially because a lot of what we're doing now is remote and applicants are not coming in as much. Um, so you really do want to feel like you can reach out to me and I want to make it as warm and uh, an inviting environment as possible so that any potential factor that you need on an individual basis is being met. Um, and of course, I want to be in the loop on that. I mean, sometimes, and this doesn't happen all the time, but it does happen every bar to at least two to three applicants, we have to postpone. Sometimes there's personal stuff that comes up. It's not always sad stuff. Um, I hope it's more happy stuff, right? Like getting married or um, maybe a promotion at work. Whatever it is, there is the right time, never the perfect time, but there is a better time to take the bar than others. So sometimes you need a coaching call to discuss that as well. My point is, whatever the needs surrounding the bar preparation are, I'm there to guide you. So I hope that helps. I hope I gave you um, what you needed to then plug in potentially some additional questions. And as always, if you do have additional questions, please put them in the comments below. If you want to book a consult, 
email me directly at cabarstyle at yahoo.com. If you've taken a recent test, please attach any recent scores. Um, that will be really ha uh, helpful to me giving you that guidance of when you should take the test and um, what I think the best preparation for you will be. Be well and good luck.